And how would you do it without burning all bridges or reducing your image to ashes? I love how a professor, it takes a professor to ask that. Thank you very much for that question, sir. Who would like to take this? Actually, one of the, the, the differences in a franchisee franchise or relationship that is different with the marriage is that there is a fixed term to the franchise. There's a fixed term. So one of the ways where the, you know, one of the easiest ways would be to wait for the term to expire. And that would be one way to end the relationship. And it could be that it is already because it is towards the end of the relationship. Uh, and that is the proper timing for it. The other way would be to the retail and uh, to agree that uh, actually I need to disagree and say that you know maybe our our values are not aligned and we don't the, the franchise. Uh, of course, the the most the messiest one is a termination, and uh, where the franchisor would write the franchisee and say, you know, we've tried working it out with you. Because obviously we're not just uh, here to, um, to 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 work with you in terms of the brand. There are other people in the system that are going to be affected if we don't take action, and the termination might be necessary. Well said. Thank you very much, Sir Jerome. Any additions to that? I guess this is exactly why my dad told me that when I get married, I should ensure that there's a renewal clause in the marriage contract. That was proposed once, remember? No, my, it should just be 10 years to marry. I'm serious. My dad, God bless his soul, my dad seriously said, lagay mo yan para sigurado ka, no? But, <laughs> but, but, uh, I agree with Glenn, no? What he's saying is that for a franchise contract, there is a fixed term, and therefore after which, both parties can sit down and therefore evaluate whether this is something that we both want to do. Uh, you try to do that with your wife, except that you cannot do anything, right? But uh, um, but sometimes there are violations that are that are committed even way before the franchise contract ends. At, at which point the franchisor needs to make a decision. Um, at least for for our franchise contract, there's. That the violations are classified into minor and, and critical deviations. And minor ones are those that you can say, stand in the corner lang yung, yung franchisee and rectify it. No, of course, you're like grounded. But there are those that are super, super bad, like she got pregnant or something, that you can't do anything about. But that's something that you now need to call the attention of the franchisee on and therefore impose the corresponding penalties. And if it means that you have to defranchise the franchisee because the, the uh, violation is so grave that it affects the entire system, which you're also trying to protect as a franchisor, then we may have to make that call. And how to avoid burning the bridge in such a situation is something that I feel is inevitable. And, and sometimes you may have to let go of certain relationships for, for the good of the uh, majority. Yes, there's another question. Yes, hi, sir. Good afternoon. Yeah, uh, good afternoon. Um, I'm Nono Escaleta. I used to be a franchisor. Now I'm a franchisee. And uh, I, I was in franchising and um, I'm, I'm, I'm into family business consulting. Uh, Regarding the, uh, there are a lot of things that struck me that starting this morning. It's about governance this morning and uh, in relation to governance, in relation to bringing it to the franchise system. Uh, thinking aloud, I think we, we need to bring, bring the, the relationship to a higher level. When you think about governance, in fact, some franchisees, and it was stated earlier, it's about stability and integrity. It's really part of governance. So, so in, 
when when we look at franchise source uh, the question we can also ask ourselves is about the governance system of the franchise store because uh, we've seen that uh, a lot of of franchise stores are family owned businesses and the issue on sustainability succession professionalization and even some do not have formal boards in the franchise company becomes a becomes one one very important factor that the franchisee will have to consider in selecting now when we talk about conflicts uh, part of part of governance i'd like you to react on this part of governance is really alignment also of values as far as the franchisor and franchises are concerned so uh, we we avoid conflicts especially if we anchor on a common set of values of franchisors and franchisees so um, maybe i can ask the franchisees and franchisors as well about uh, the governance system as far as the franchisor is concerned and um, and how they are also going to help the franchisees in terms of setting up their own governance system in the business. Thank you very much for that question. With regard to governance, this is a matter of implementing? Or I think it's even before that. Eh? Uh, when you shop for a brand or a company, this is what you were saying. And in fact, what Ms. Feli and Ms. Tweet were mentioning earlier, you want a company that believes in the same things you do. Like um, levels of governance. Uh, uh, Burned? No. <laughs> See, I, I, I'm sorry. No. I just used the term. Uh, getting to that because no. it seemed to be a sensitive term. No. No, not at all. Because in being a franchisee, you're a partner as well. We are not governed by Maxes, but we have to follow the franchise agreement so that. Uh, there will be a harmonious relationship with each other. We, follow, we need to follow the standards because that's precisely why you got a franchise of that brand because you, you believe in, in their system and you believe in their processes. So you have to follow their, their system. And again, it's one of the most important points that before you sign, you need to be aligned so that the problems don't arise later on, right? That's why a dialogue even before anything is signed is very, very important. Uh, any other questions from our audience members? Yes, Hi, good afternoon. Hello. Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah. This is actually a very basic question, a very simple question. We've been talking about the, the things, the, the secrets, the basic things that we need to know on how to like, grow the business. But how about the challenges that, that go with it? Like for the franchisees, uh, how are you able to assess um, that that particular business is indeed workable for you. Challenges. How the question is how how was I able how, are you how were able we to assess, assess the, Sorry, the business? Yeah, from the very start, how were you able to assess how? that that particular business is like indeed workable for you? Yeah. That you can it deal is, with it. Yeah, it was something that we we believe in the product. We believe in the product. We use the product, so we know that if it worked for us. People, when, when people buy it, it will also work for them. So that's, that's why we, we knew that if we got into the business, that it would be a good business. Given we get, you get a good location. Yeah, for me, it's the right location. And uh, we have to survey if the, the population is uh, good enough for putting up a Maxis restaurant in one place. So if uh, the market is red, already ripe, then that's the time that we open the store in that area. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. To add to your question, though, I want to throw it at uh, Mr. Glenn and Mr. Jerome here. I'd like to believe that's why there's trust in the franchisor, that especially for a newbie franchisee, these problems are probably problems you already encountered along the way. That, that's reassuring. 
it's it's fair to say that um, the, the franchise server have pretty much.